Good morning. Welcome to Church of the Holy Spirit. This is our live stream worship service on March 29th. Um, this is the fifth Sunday of Lent. We have made it through the whole Lenten season. And this morning, we'll talk a little bit about the importance of the resurrection. This is all led into Holy Week, the Easter season, and celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Um, if you are needing a worship bulletin, you can go to our Facebook page and find one linked there. You can download it, print it out if you haven't, all the prayers, the responses, everything is there. And so we begin this morning with our acclamation and collect at the Book of Common Prayer, page 355. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affection of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, open your hearts and attend to the reading of the word and what God has to say to us this morning. The first reading this morning is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out of the Spirit, by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal? Can these bones live? I answered, O oh, Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, 
prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, Prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord your God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. The psalm is Psalm 130. Out of the depths I have called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, O Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you. Therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than a watchman for the morning, more than watchman for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption. He shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading this morning is from the Epistle of Paul to the Romans, chapter 8. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, Though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God might be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? And Jesus answered, are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death. But they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I'm glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died but even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up and quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in the spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead 
four days. <clears throat> Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Our Father, open our ears to hear the words that you have for us this morning. Help us to love what you command and desire what you promise, that our hearts may surely be fixed where true joys are found. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Lord, if only you had been here. How many of us have ever said those words or similar? All too often life takes us down paths that we would rather not choose to go. A loss of a job, a broken relationship, loss of a loved one. Each one of us understands the grief that both Mary and Martha showed at the death of Lazarus. If only had God shown up, things might have been different. Well, this is understandable. I mean, we all have an innate desire for things to go well. And we also might tend to think that Christianity somehow promises a life that is smooth sailing without many ups and downs. And certainly there are scriptures that seem to promise this. But then reality sets in. And even Christians must deal with pain without a whole lot of answers. In the midst of the struggles of life, our collect this morning challenges us to a different perspective. See, we asked God to help us love what he commands, to desire the things that he promises. Well, his promise is that through these swift and varied changes of the world, he is actually at work drawing us into true joy. And according to the passages this morning, this true joy is found in us being made alive in him. The grace of God is that he promises resurrection of both body and soul. We've seen this Lenten season that far from a little fixing up, a little here or there, a little touch up, a little, you know, knocking off a few rough edges, we actually need to be made completely new. We're dead and we need life. What we need is resurrection. And this is why Easter is so important. The entire story of the Bible is how God is undoing sin and death. He's doing this in order to give us new life in him. And the resurrection of Christ delivers on God's promise that this is exactly what he is doing for us. This promise has, uh, the promise of new life has always been part of God's plan. See, we go all the way back to the time of Ezekiel. God takes Ezekiel to a valley full of dry bones. See, a great battle had taken place. And enough time had passed that nothing was left except skeletons. And in this story, God takes this army and raises them back to life. 
And this was to be a lesson for Israel because he commands Ezekiel to tell Israel that one day he would restore his people just like this army. And when this happens, all will know that God makes good on his promises. One of the things that's important to see is these bones were utterly dependent upon the work of God. The bones could not resurrect themselves. They could not bring, breathe new life into themselves. It was God and God alone that gave them life. And it's the same with us. We are utterly dependent on the promise of God to give us new life. And too often, we work hard to keep ourselves together. We try to resurrect areas in our lives that have died. Things fall apart, and we try to put them back together ourselves. We try to fix ourselves and others. And yet, Christianity is not about us and God partnering together to fix our lives. Christianity is about God bringing us to the end of our rope where we discover that he alone brings new life. Sometimes there are things in our life that, that need to die, sins that we hold on to, certain entitlements to comfort and ease, dreams that are incompatible with God's plan. In the midst of all of our pain of loss, God is making good on his promise to give life. But it doesn't always appear as we expect. Because in the answer of the brokenness and loss of life, God is giving us Jesus. This becomes clear in the story of Lazarus. See, Lazarus could easily have kept, or Jesus could easily have kept Lazarus from dying. Mary and Martha knew this. That, that's what made Christ's initial response so disturbing. Why had he not come in time? And despite their broken hearts, Jesus had a much greater purpose in the death of Lazarus because it was here that he would finally demonstrate that he alone has the power over death. Many Jews, including Martha, believed in a general resurrection that would come finally at the day of the Lord. But Jesus takes the opportunity to declare that he is the resurrection and the life. See, that day that they had longed for had finally come. And all the promises of new life that had gone before were finally being revealed in Christ in their confusion and grief, they could not see the bigger picture of what God was doing. And it happens too often with us when things in our lives go wrong and we're tempted to ask God, where are you? Where were you? It's easy to forget that God has a greater purpose that he is actively bringing about. And we are simply called to trust and believe that he is fulfilling that promise in our lives. So then when we get to Romans, it's easy to think that we're, be given, we're given a choice between how to live. We either have minds of flesh or we have minds of spirit. But this isn't what Paul is saying here. Paul isn't challenging believers to think in a particular way. This isn't a formula to finally find life and peace. Paul is simply describing who we already are in Christ. Because of Christ, instead of death, we have life and peace. The power of Christ has resurrected our souls. We are not of the flesh but we are of the Spirit because the Spirit of God lives within us. Paul is describing the reality of what happens when we have finally been made alive in Christ. This is why the idea of resurrection is so important to the believers because we need life. And the only path to find life is in Christ. 
And though our bodies still are decaying because of sin, even that will be made new one day because the same one who resurrected Christ on Easter is the one who lives within us. And because he lives in us, our immortal, our mortal bodies will one day be made immortal in Christ. It's easy to be confused when things go wrong around us, especially in times like today, when our entire lives have been upended by the very real threat of sickness and death. And even in times like this, God is the one who reigns over all creation along with the Son and the Holy Spirit. He is still working out his plan to renew our lives and to draw us into fellowship with him. So when the world seems to be turned upside down, when things in our individual lives seem to be spinning out of control, when we face loss and wonder, like Mary and Martha, where were you, God? It's here that we have the opportunity to trust in the one who has already sacrificed all to give us life. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, enliven our hearts. Speak to us through your Holy Spirit and show us the life that we have in Christ. Help us to cling to Christ as the author and finisher of our faith, and through faith we will trust in you. It is in Christ's name that we ask this. Amen. We now have the opportunity to confess what we believe about this great faith of ours, using the Nicene Creed on page 358 in your Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people follow form four on page 392 in the Book of Common Prayer. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For President Donald Trump, Governor Ron DeSantis, Mayor Brian Nelson, and all who hold elected positions in this community, the nation, and the world for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, 
for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and the unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, Gregory Brewer, our bishop, Father Rob, our rector, West Malaysia and Bishop Moon Hings, St. James Church, Ormond Beach, and Reverend Roy Allison, Church of the Incarnation, Oviedo, and Reverend Tom Phillips, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God and his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And now, Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now, may the peace of God dwell on you. May he fill you. May he subdue all anxieties and fears and draw you into deeper fellowship with him. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Um, at this moment, we're going to take about two minutes and um, those who are serving on the altar are going to wash up, we're going to scrub up, um, and then we'll come back and I'll have uh, a few quick announcements for you, um, tell you about the rest of the day and some things going on this week. And uh, so we will be back in about two minutes.
Well, again, I want to say welcome. Uh, welcome to Church of the Holy Spirit. It's a blessing to worship with you. Um, even though we are spread out in many homes and TV screens and cell phones or however you're watching um, this particular live cast or watching it later on, that's okay too. Um, thank you. Thank you for joining Thank you for being a part of the worship here at Church of the Holy Spirit. If you are visiting this uh, webcast, if this is your first time being connected with Holy Spirit Church, drop a comment in, in the comment section there. Uh, we'll just say hi, tell us where you're from. Uh, we would love to know. Um, if you want us to reach out to you, please say, hey, you know, give me a, uh, give me a, PM. I guess I can't say give me a call. But um, so just let us know if you need us to reach out to you for any any reason at all. We would love to. So thank you for joining us. Um, following this service, uh, and despite all of the the restrictions that have been placed on us for meeting, uh, we kind of went through. Um, all of the announcements and everything, I thought, okay, we can still do drive-through Eucharist with some caveats. And so beginning at 10.30 um, this morning, so after this service is done, we're going to get our act together and get something set up. We're going to do drive-through Eucharist here at Church of the Holy Spirit. We are located in Apopka at 601 South Highland Avenue. It's on the corner of Highland and Sixth. And so if you know Apopka at all, we are just right down the street from the Apopka Police Department. So if you're catching this, uh, even randomly, uh, we're gonna be outside. We're going to be delivering um, Holy Eucharist and in a drive-through procession. What that means is you're gonna come to the church, you're gonna enter on Highland down by the youth house, so towards the back of the property, and then you're going to come um, through the parking lot up to the front of the church. This is important. Please stay in your cars. This is not an opportunity, especially for our church, because you know how much we love to get together. Um, it's not an opportunity to get out and congregate. Please stay in your cars um, and come up, roll down your windows, and we will administer the sacrament to you. And then you'll exit out on 6th Street. Stay in your car. Okay, so one of the caveats is this. Um, Mayor Demings of Orange County has put a stay-at-home order. We are now under a stay-at-home. That doesn't necessarily include um, religious institutions or opportunities to worship, so this is okay. And so is drive through Eucharist, with one exception. Mayor Ron DeSantis has also asked that anybody 65 and older stay at home. I'm going to ask you to comply with that. If you, walk, if you drive through anyway, I'm not going to tell you to leave. I'll probably shake my finger at you. But, um, but just know that, that that is for your protection. Um, and I'll leave it there. So please, um, if you can, comply with that. Um, this week, then, we have um, opportunities for morning prayer. So on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I will be doing morning prayer live on our Facebook page. And you can join me. This is a great opportunity to come together, to connect in the Word, to connect in prayer, to give us a sense of community, even in, as we're spread out. So Join me at 9 a.m. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for morning prayer. And if you've never done morning prayer, a week ago on Monday, I believe it was the 23rd, I did a special instructive service of morning prayer. You can go back and watch that one to give you a sense of really how easy it is for you to do morning prayer on your own, for that matter. So please check that out. One of the things um, that I continue to encourage each one of you. You know, we don't have the opportunity to do music in this service. You, we're, I'm thankful for our organist, Julie Shetsky, to play during this service, but we don't have the opportunity to sing together. And music is so important for our souls. So if you would, find your favorite hymn CD, your favorite um, station on Pandora or radio station, and spend some time 
in worship, in song. Would you do that? Um, it will be good for your souls, and so I encourage you to do that. Lastly, I want to talk about giving. Um, now that we are not coming to the church on a regular basis, uh, we still uh, need to keep the lights on. We need to pay for our internet and stream these services. So please know that there are several ways that you can give to Church of the Holy Spirit. One would be simply write a check and mail it. That would be sent to our address, 601 South Highland Avenue in Apopka, 32703. Another opportunity is to give online. That's, we've made that very easy. You go to give.holyspiritapopka.com. That'll take you right to our giving portal, and you can give there. That's give.holyspiritapopka, all one, dot com, and you'll be able to give there. Finally, you can text Holy Spirit Apopka to 73256. Tell you what, all of this technology, <laughs> sometimes it can be put to good use. So um, please do, please support your church, um, support the ministry that's going on here in Apopka. Thank you. Well, now we have the opportunity um, to experience Holy Eucharist. We are going to um, have the Eucharist service now, and from that service, we will be serving um, Eucharist in our drive through Eucharist in a little bit. Uh, I did want to point out, um, during our Lenten season, for those of you who are familiar with our 1030 service, um, normally we would be in right to... Uh, during Lenten season, we have been praying through Rite 1, um, so it'll sound a little bit different. So if you are following along in your Book of Common Prayers, please open to page 333 and follow along in those prayers. One of the reasons why I've included Rite 1 is because um, there is a wonderful prayer of humble access that I think is very apropos to the season of Lent, but also to this season of just being at home and being isolated from one another. Please um, pay close attention to that prayer once we get to it. And now our offertory sentence is walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself to us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Before we begin, one of the things I like to remind us every week is that this is the Lord's table. This is not the church's table. It's not my table. This is Christ offering himself to us. And as such, if you are a baptized believer in any denomination, um, this is for you. This has been given to you as a celebration of life and grace. And so I invite you to come. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer up unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, 
most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. And now, the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts through faith and with thanksgiving.
And now we continue with the post-communion prayer on page 339 in the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, and we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. And now, in the place of of our seasonal blessing during Lent, I pray a solemn prayer over people. Look with compassion, O Lord, upon this your people, that rightly observing this holy season, they may learn to know you more fully and to serve you with a more perfect will through Christ our Lord. Amen. So before I give the dismissal, um, I wanted to just remind you that starting at 10.30, uh, so in about 30 minutes, we will be having drive through Eucharist. Uh, please come in down by the youth house and form a line, and we will get you in and out. And so now, let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.